Hi there, let me ask you something. What does a race car, airplane, and wind turbine all have in common? Take a second to think about it. Great, you guessed an airfoil, right? You didn't. Oh, well, let me elaborate. This here is an airfoil. It's a special shape that creates a force when it's moving through a fluid. It can come in all shapes and sizes. They can be long, they can be stubby, they can be thin, they can be THICK! What the heck it do? There are multiple thousands of different airfoil shapes with their own unique properties like the klein fogelman airfoil, or commonly abbreviated as a KF airfoil, which we'll get into later. To understand why airfoils are so useful, we need to first understand how they work. As an airfoil is moved through a fluid, whether it be water or air, the fluid has to move around the shape. The way the fluid moves around the shape determines what effect the interaction has. The leading edge of the airfoil rams the oncoming air and splits the flow into two directions. On the bottom of the airfoil, the fluid, let's use air for example, slides by easily with no interference. On the top of the airfoil, we have a curvature. On the surface of an airfoil, there's a boundary layer of air that is sticky, so it sucks in the surrounding airflow. This makes oncoming airflow follow the path of the curve, and this is called the Coanda effect. Ooh, fancy science word. The tendency of a fluid jet to stay attached to a convex surface. This is like when you're washing a spoon and the water wraps around it. <laughs> So now that we know that, there's another cool effect that comes into play. This curve also accelerates the air as it rushes by. Since the air is moving faster, there aren't many air molecules crowding in that air anymore. In other words, this increase in airflow velocity creates a low pressure zone above the airfoil. This is part of what's known as Bernoulli's principle, which states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with the decrease in static pressure or the fluid's potential energy. We now find that there's a massive pressure difference between the top and bottom surface of an airfoil. A low pressure on top, a higher pressure on the bottom. This pressure difference causes the airfoil to be sucked into the low pressure zone. Here's a quick demonstration of this effect that you could try at home. First, we need a simple piece of paper. Instead of a curve to accelerate the airflow, we're going to use our mouth. Hold the piece of paper by the edge and blow across its surface, but not directly into the paper. Watch what happens. The faster airflow on one side of the paper makes the paper to be sucked into it. This combination of all these effects is how airfoils create this force known as lift. So, how does a car, plane, and wind turbine all use airfoils? Well, in the car, the spoiler uses an upside down airfoil to create downforce, which gives the car more traction. In the plane, the wind uses an airfoil to lift itself upwards into the sky. In this wind turbine, the blade's airflow has a component of lift that makes the blade assembly rotate the generator and create electricity. So now let's get into the concept of KF airflows, which is the focus of today's video. Unlike a conventional airflow, KF airflows are stepped, which leaves the gaps behind them. You might be thinking these large gaps cause lots of turbulence, and they do, but this airflow can use that to its advantage. As airflow rushes by the step, it curls inwards, which creates a thick vortex of air that acts like a surface the surrounding airflow can interact with, essentially making a normal streamlined airflow. There could be some potential advantages to the design as it's simpler to build and we can place stuff behind it, but there could also be some potential disadvantages to it. What are they? I don't know either, so that's what we're going to find out.
So I finished making both the conventional and KF airfoil for us to test out later. Both are airfoils, you might be asking, but then I only have one wing, which has only one airfoil. Well, watch. I got one, two, bakamash. By having two airfoils on one wing, it allows me to easily swap between them while we're out on the field. Since this is only a two-channel glider, I put in some dihedral, or upward angle, on my wing to gain some passive stability. A problem I encountered along the way is I didn't have long enough push rods, so I ended up joining two of them using some heat shrink tubing. By the way, if you want to build this glider at home, I included some plants in the description. I designed it with four different tail configurations and two swappable noses. But you can always modify it to your liking. So. Now let's head to the park. Wait, why didn't that work? Oh, it did work. Nice. Let's see which one does better. Pause. Let me actually explain the plan for this experiment as I've barely done so this entire video. The conventional airfoil will be our control while the KF airfoil will be the experiment, of course. I'll be trying my best to hand launch the glider as consistently as I can for over multiple trials. To record data on the performance of each airfoil, we'll be measuring the distance of each flight using this tape measure. No, not this tiny tape measure, this tape measure. To mark where the glider lands, I'll be using these two water bottles that are, that are wrapped in colored paper. The blue water bottle represents the, a flight with the conventional airfoil. And the red water bottle represents a flight with the KF airfoil. Wait a minute. That's it basically, so now let's get back to the planes. So that flight was pretty tail heavy, I didn't have much control, so I added more nose weight using this battery and made some larger fins. So that flight with the conventional airfoil had a distance of around 69 feet, which is pretty noise. Now we just gotta do this a bunch of more times. Ratio wing. 
conflict ratio is the ratio between the length of the wing and the chord of the wing. So what can we conclude from this experiment? Not much. Let me explain. This is the data I've collected. We can find that the conventional airfoil had an average distance glided of around 69 feet, while the KF airfoil had an average distance glided of around 67 feet. Also, the KF airfoil glided the farthest with a total distance of 83 feet, compared to the conventional's 81 feet. To summarize, they both performed very similarly at low speeds. This data also has a massive range, which means there are a lot of inconsistencies. There are many factors that could have caused this, like my hand launches, the wind, maybe the ground effect, ground effect. or the plane sliding around a lot. Due to all of this, we can't take away much from the experiment other than I gained a lot more experience. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to have a nice day. By the way, did you notice this little rubber ducky that I hit somewhere in the video?